Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping in again today. You know we are on a 50 state tour. You know we are in Hawaii. Well, I am in Hawaii right now and I am speaking to Aaron Ho. So Aaron from Pearl City, Hawaii, hello. Hi. Aaron, tell everybody what it is we're doing today here in Hawaii. What's the big celebration? Well, this weekend we're celebrating um, the day, uh, holiday known as Kamehameha Day. In my line of work, we don't have many holidays. Tell me, tell me what it is you do for a living. Uh, for the living, uh, I just got into selling insurance. Okay, which is funny because, and that's, you and I started laughing about that, right? We were laughing about the fact that you are selling insurance. And why did we find that so funny? Well, it's funny for me because I never thought in a million years I'd be selling insurance. Why? Because um, I guess I've, my life path has taken me to be so many different people and uh, so many different things and insurance just seems so out of left field. <laughs> Were you not an opera singer at one time? At one time, yes. Are you going to belt out a tune for me just a tiny bit? Uh, here and now? Yes, right now. My audience needs a sample of this loveliness. <laughs> Maybe toward the end. <laughs> so Aaron, you were once an opera singer. What else have you done in your life? Well, um, I've been a uh, massage practitioner. I've been a, um, a holistic healer, which is somewhat like massage therapy. Um, I've also um, worked in the, the clergy, the theology, um, Realm. I was a, a culture resource with the Bishop Museum, which is the State Museum on Culture History. I uh, I was in the um, ling the linguistics field for a time, um, the uh, anthropology field for a time. Um, I was a teacher for a time. I, I've I've done a lot of different a lot of different things. Okay, so you and I, because we're here, and we're just to give everybody a clear picture of what's going on here. It's probably. I keep telling my audience, this is the most beautiful scene you've ever seen. It's so amazing. But I mean, the mountains surrounding the bay right across from the ocean with the palm trees and the stone jetty and just people swimming and, and having such a blast. And we're just having a great time enjoying the gorgeous sun, right? And so you and I get on, uh, just start having a conversation. And the conversation was, well, Aaron, what do you think your passion is after I told you what we're up to? And you said? I said that um, after my entire life of searching, I, I don't know. And I think that you represent so many of my audience members though. So many people who don't know what their passions are. How are you finding that out? Because you said you're looking for your purpose, right? Yes, I think I've been looking for that for my entire life. Um, it kind of started out with um, things I was charged to do or things I, um, it was my obligations to do. Um, and so when I, had, when I started to have the internal questions, okay, what do I, what do I want to do? I started finding them really hard to answer because I was never in that space before. You know, so what is my passion to do? I, I, I don't know. I have a lot of things that I've been, I've defaulted into because I just happen to be good at them or uh, defaulted into because I was expected to do them but as to what I want to do I, I, I don't know what if I ask you this question and really listen and take your time here but you've had a lot of different roles that you've played in your life what if I told you that your purpose in life is not a role that you play but a feeling that you get so when you think about the different roles you've played in your life, which ones gave you a feeling that made you feel amazing and purposeful, that fulfilled you? Can you think of roles that stand out to you that made you feel the best? Yes. Which ones are they? Um. The one, the roles I feel most fulfilled in are the ones that allow me to help others be the best they can be. Like which roles? Um, my, my career as a, a language teacher, um, my career at, or my, my business as a, as a life coach, 
it seems somewhat awkward now, you know, in this interview. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking about my <laughs> my search for a passion and being a, being a life coach, but somehow it works out. No, because you're human. <laughs> because you're human and we're all still searching and the journey is never over anyway, right? Yeah. So, what else? Teacher, um, <clears throat> life coach, and I've played both of those roles, just so you know. Um, one of the great... Um, joys of my life has been or was uh, a mentor musician I was given the opportunity through um, through a company I was a part of to um, to mentor a, an up-and-coming vocalist <laughs> so what do you think your purpose is Aaron leading or I don't know how to put it just yet I guess teaching teaching see that's the thing like teaching can be done in a lot of different ways and it sounds to me like what you're saying is you get the most meaning out of guiding mentoring and teaching people mm. I would say that's true so I believe that and this is just this is this is why you and I are having this conversation right now because I said you know what Aaron if you don't mind like you know we're recording interviews for season three mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? I would rather speak to you right now today about this because I know so many people, so many of my audience members are striving to discover their passion, their purpose, right? And they don't really realize that it's not a role they play because see, if it was a role that you played, then when you retired from your job, that means you're nobody, you don't have a purpose anymore. No, that's not true, right? That's not true. So. The purpose is what makes you feel a specific way that feeds your soul or fulfills you the most. And that's why I thought maybe we could have this give and take conversation so that my audience can hear what you've been going through, all of the different roles you've played and discover for themselves the roles they've played to find what is that common thread. Because that common thread of the way it makes them feel is their purpose. What do you think you could do with this information? Right now, you're in insurance sales, right? <laughs> yes. Hmm. I mean, does it mean that you have to leave your job, your full-time job? No. Doesn't mean that right off the bat. You could add something to your life that's enriching, hmm. right? Something that enriches your life. Your, your purpose, I don't believe that people's purposes and their careers or their jobs necessarily have to be completely in aligned. I think you can do something you're good at, like you said, and still do something that fills your soul on the side. I see people do it all the time. Does it mean after you retire from your career or your job that you wouldn't move into that full time then? But how can, how can we make sure that you're, you're living your purpose while still working your job? That's a great question. What types of things do you think you could look into? Because you know what the other thing is? I always tell people, Envision it for yourself, explore what it would take, and then execute a plan. It sounds like before you can envision this for yourself, you have a little exploration to do first. Yes. Maybe I oh, should, maybe, maybe my plan should be explore, envision, execute. Mm. See how you just mess with my mind too, Aaron? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. Thank you so much. And you know what? Uh, we are gonna do a follow-up interview with you let's say a year from now okay all right so you have some time to do some exploring some envisioning and some executing to let us know so my audience can say okay this maybe this is what I need to be doing all right all right that so, sounds like a plan so fellow motivators stay tuned remember that you motivate me and I am Lynette Renda from the shores of Hawaii Ooh. <laughs>